Hi, my name is Sean Conley from Epic Games, and today we're going to have a look at MIDI and the engine and build some tools around it. This is what we're going to make today. It's just a editor utility widget that sees all of the MIDI input devices connected to your computer, and then it goes to the scenes and finds some rig rails and some camera cranes, and we're going to be able to control them using the wheels and knobs, and we're going to play some sequences. So right here, I have a monogram controller. They used to have a plugin in UE4. It looks like they paused development or in UE5, quite sure why, but that's okay. We can just use it as a regular MIDI controller and build some blueprints around that. First things first, we need to go in and enable some plugins. So you want to enable the remote control protocol MIDI, uh, MIDI device support, and we're gonna have a quick look at the remote control API as well, but we're gonna build most of this stuff in blueprints. So enable those. And then let's have a quick look at remote control in case you're not familiar with it. So if you just want to use the MIDI device to change some attributes on the actor, just, you know, kind of very simple, this is by far the easiest and best way to do it. So if you double click here, once you have enabled the plugin, you'll see these little kind of three dots here that show up in the engine. Go to expose property and then select this and go to protocols and you can add a binding. And then down here, you can select which MIDI device you want to use. So let's have a look at the log real quick. Oops. So one really, really, really nice thing about the remote control preset is the log. So in here, it's spitting out a whole bunch of great information that you're going to need and want later. The thing with the MIDI device, everything is considered a control change. In different MIDI controllers, you'll see like button pushes will be note on and off and, you know, different kind of knobs will be uh, pitch bend. But for the MIDI controller, for whatever reason, everything's considered a control change. And then you can see the value, right? When I'm twisting these knobs, it's going from 1 to 127. And when I twist this knob, it goes up and down sequentially. Now, I've set that on purpose here. When you get a MIDI controller connected to your computer, it'll most likely have some sort of piece of software where you, you can go in and you can state which number or channel you want each knob to be. So I've just, you know, kind of gone through here and this is number zero and this is number one and this is number two, this is number three. Now the differences in why this just goes from one to 127 and this, you know, will count up from one to 127 is this, this absolute versus relative. So this is absolute and then this is relative. And we'll go over, you know, why I set these things this way later on. But this is just, you know, this log here is really handy. So anyway, let's turn that back off. We add our MIDI devices. So let's just go. So basically this is saying, you know, at zero, be here at 127, be here. If we go to record and we move our MIDI device here, and then we stop recording, it's, it's going to remember that and say, okay, you know, use this knob to move this actor. And if you want to change that, you just record again and use a different knob and it will remember this knob to change this actor. If you just want to quickly move like pitch or something using a controller, the remote control preset is definitely the easiest way to go. It's great. But if you want to do something a little bit more complex, then you need to build a utility widget or, or you know, it, tap into the blueprint library some way. Okay, so let's create a editor utility widget here to uh, capture our MIDI device here. So let's go to the utilities, a utility widget. You can name this whatever you like. Jump in here. I like to use grid panels for a lot of stuff, but you, you can probably use like a vertical panel or anything. And then I pretty much always size the content here. Now, 
the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to find the connected MIDI devices and be able to select one so that we can create an input controller out of it. So we'll, what we can do is get all the connected MIDI devices and, and put them into a combo box, and then we can just select them right there from the GUI. Let's get some text that we can label it. Put that there. Devices, and let's just MIDI devices. There we go. Now we have a combo box. And let's put this in one. Let's name it MIDI devices. There we go. Now let's hop over into our graph here. And we don't need any of this stuff. The first thing we're gonna do is make a event construct. So this event will fire as soon as we run the enter utility widget. And then here, we're going to want to find our connected MIDI devices. So let's make a custom event, a custom event, and let's just name this MIDI devices emitted. And there's actually just a node in blueprints called find MIDI devices. And we'll stuff that into an array. And we'll just call that MIDI devices. There we go. And we'll run that custom event as soon as we make the enter utility widget. Okay, so now when we run it, we'll find all the connected MIDI devices and we'll put them in this variable here. But that won't populate the actual combo box. So we want to be able to take everything that we find in here and put it in a slot for the combo box. So let's make a, another custom event here and say populate in the combo box. There we go. Let's grab our devices for each. And here, pull out here, and there's something called break found MIDI device. And in this break found MIDI device, there's a bunch of good information. Specifically, we're going to want the device name and the device ID. And then from there, we can add options. So let's grab this guy. And let's go add option. There we go. So to be able to get at this stuff later, we're gonna want to create a dictionary out of it. Basically a way to associate the device ID with the device name. Cause there's some things that are gonna want the device name and there's some things that are gonna want the device ID. And we wanna be able to say, hey, what's the device ID for monogram one? Or what's the device name for device ID zero? So, in Unreal Engine, a dictionary is called a map. So let's go ahead and make that. Get a append string here. There we go. And let's get the device name first. And let's add a pen. And we'll get the device ID. Now we're going to add that to our combo box. So what we just did here is we created a string and it's going to be the device ID dash or sorry, the device name dash the device ID. And it's going to add that to our combo box. Now let's go through here and create our dictionary. And then we'll go back and have a look at it in the actual editor utility widget itself. So let's make a variable. It's going to control this controller map right now. It's a string. And then if you go over here, you can make this a map 
and you can set whatever the value is, you know, but we just want an integer because the device IDs are integer only. And let's go through here and drag this wrong one. Drag you in, hit add. That and then the device ID there. Let's be a little organized here. I promise not to get too OCD in the video about the blueprints, even though it will really bother me. But that's okay. So now if we compile this, we go here, we run it. Uh, oh, I do this every single time. We did not put this custom event to be fired on event construct. So populate maybe combo box, compile and save. Now run this again. And if we pull down, here's all of our mini devices. But when we select this, it doesn't do anything, right? It's just, we're just kind of selecting a string format here. So let's change that. On the combo box itself, if you scroll all the way down, there's events and there's an event called on selection changed. So when we select something, that's what it is, right? It's, it's we're changing the selection. So here we want to create a MIDI input device based off of that. Great. MIDI, uh, sorry, MIDI, MIDI input controller. So it's something with Unreal Engine and MIDI and, and like the devices connected to it, you want to force garbage collection quite a bit and garbage collect. So we'll just go ahead and drop that here because eventually we're going to build this to where we can select this and then select this and select something else, select something else and not have to like reboot the engine or do anything like that. So every time that we do it, we want to force garbage collection. And then, so here we want to get the device ID for the input controller. And this is exactly why we made this dictionary here, right? So we get the selected item. So if you go back here, so this is the selected item, right? This is what this knows. Where is this? This selected item here, it knows that it's on the string monogram MIDI dash one, but that's not the device ID. That's just the string. But since we made a relationship between the that string and the device ID, the value, we can derive it. So let's grab you, go find, and we'll give that. So now we can get the device ID from that. And let's take this, put it into variable so that we can get at it later. Call this MIDI controller. And now when we select something, it will go through and it will create a MIDI controller. But that still doesn't let us do anything, right? Like we haven't told Unreal Engine like, hey, you know, I'm turning these knobs, I'm hitting these buttons, so do something. And that's called a bind event. So we're gonna do that next. So here, let's clean up a little bit. Let's call this. Uh, MIDI combo box colors find MIDI. Uh, I'm making these little boxes by hitting C, by the way. Okay, so now let's make another custom event or and let's call this. Find event. And then remember when we were um, back in the remote control preset, we were in the log and it was spitting out, you know, kind of all that good information. And one part of the information was that the monogram, everything's considered a MIDI control change. So that's, you know, that's kind of when we're going to need that information here. So bind event. So 
Again, like, you know, other MIDI controllers, buttons will be considered note on and off, or, you know, knobs can be considered pitch bend. So, you know, go into that log and, and see what your MIDI controller spits out. But for the monogram, it's all control change. So bind event on MIDI control change. And then here, we're going to create an event. And then go to create matching event. There we go. So this event is what is going to fire when we hit a button, move a knob, move this knob. This event here is what will fire. So this is what we need to build some logic off of. The first thing that we probably want to do is to see what Unreal sees when we turn a knob. So let's get a print string here. Let's create ourselves, you know, kind of like a little debug string here. So append string and let's do tell us what channel something is. If I do that a lot. String here. So and string and do tell us what channel something is. I do that a lot. There we go. And then type. and value. Put that on there. So now we compile, we run, select our mini device. Oh, again, I didn't add the bind event. There we go. So now on select and changed, it will go through, it'll create the input device and it will also create the bind event or before uh, I wasn't creating the bind event. There we go. Run this. And there we go. Now we're seeing stuff being spit out here. So let's have a look at this. This is channel one, uh, type zero, and the value is 27, 127. This is type one. So if we compare this here, see this is, you know, one, and this is relative, and this is zero, and this is, uh, sorry, this is relative, and this is also relative. There we go. So that's working. So we can move this down here a little bit. Uh, and also now that we're creating bind events, we're going to want to unbind when we destroy the MIDI controller. If you don't do that, you know, Unreal tends to like hang on to these things until you go through and either, you know, save your project or an auto save kind of goes through in garbage collects. So there's something called a event disrupt. And basically when you close this like that, it says, you know, the MIDI device or the editor utility widget is being destroyed. We're going to run something when we destroy it. And what we want to do is we want to unbind this. So let's do bind controller. And then here we are going to create a custom event. And we're going to call unbind. We're going to grab our MIDI controller and we are going to unbind all events MIDI control change. And then we're going to collect garbage.
Never mind. Great. So now let's do so call this up here. Unbind bit. There we go. So now every time that we destroy the editor utility widget, it will unbind this event here and hopefully release the controller back to us.